never before have so few made so much fun for so many. Watch it, play it, buy it. It's Attack from Mars! Attack from Mars is a pinball machine released in December of 1995 by Midway under the Bally label. The game is known for its easy to understand rules, high quality callouts and humor, and extremely addicting gameplay, often leaving players wanting just one more. Based on the style of the classic 1950s and 60s sci-fi movies, Attack from Mars is just as campy as it is silly. Ranking at number 4 on the Pinside Top 100, ATM remains time honored and highly acclaimed throughout the years. So gear up and get your blasters ready because this is the history of Attack from Mars. Attack from Mars was designed by Brian Eddy, who had previously finished releasing his first game, The Shadow. The game's story is simple. Evil, giant, silly Martians have invaded Earth and have begun attacks around the world. It's up to you and your silver ball to save the planet. Surprisingly, neither the movie When Mars Attacks nor the 60s trading cards had anything to do with Attack from Mars. Brian Eddy conceived the game's theme and title well before he knew anything about a Mars Attacks movie. Doug Watson was the artist for the game. The duo wanted a classic theme like War of the Worlds, but with the campiness accelerated and a modern sense of humor. Early in development, Doug got some clay and wire from the local art store and spent a week in his office at Williams, creating the Martians. He designed the Martians as muscular, four-armed, nine-foot giants that looked powerful and menacing as they destroyed cities and captured Earth women. He took his style cues from the Metaluna mutants from this island Earth. Doug Watson also did the voice of the Martians and wrote the script for what they would say. He claimed his voice digitized well with the technology they had at the time. Voiceover artist Tim Kitzrow provided multiple voices for the game. Tim is also known for his voices in World Cup Soccer, Twilight Zone, and NBA Jam. The babe on the back glass is actually based on a woman who worked in the front office that Doug was friends with. He took her out to a costume shop and bought her a Marilyn Monroe dress. He then set up a photo shoot with some fans to capture the image shown. About halfway through development, the Hollywood production company behind Mars Attacks contacted Williams, concerned about the closeness to their movie. To satisfy the film's lawyers, Doug wrote out extensive legal paperwork, explaining in detail how the two properties differed. The movie Martians were three feet tall, wore spacesuits and helmets, had two arms, and were mean. Doug collected the trading cards in the 60s and remembered the extreme violence the artwork portrayed and wanted nothing to do with that in his game. Attack from Mars contains a very open playfield. Originally, this room was left for a flying saucer. The UFO was to be on a pivoting telescopic rod so it could move around the front of the playfield. This mothership had a target hanging from it that the player could hit as it traversed around. The team had one prototype which supposedly kind of half worked. Doug Watson claims it's somewhere in his garage and I hope one day maybe he'll fish it out. Software was done by Lyman Sheets Jr. using Williams' final board, the WPC-95. Attack from Mars was the first game Lyman Sheets worked on at Williams from previously working at Data East. Lyman deliberately designed a simple set of rules for the game, as everyone on the team felt that they were losing some pinball players because they were making games too complicated. This was even a big selling point in their promo. Easier to learn, sure shots right up the middle to this mothership. Music was done by Dan Forden, who had previously done Shadow and would continue to do such games such as Medieval Madness and most famously, <laughs> the game uses the then new DCS sound system. Here is an overview of the game and a good strategy to score a replay. Hold the left flipper button down while pressing the launch button for the super skill shot, sending the ball down the left orbit. Shooting any force field target will score 50 million and lower the force field immediately. Hit the targets in the back enough times to lower the drop target and shoot the saucer to destroy the UFO. Shooting the stroke of luck scoop after completing the first saucer will often give you start attack wave, allowing you to immediately try the second saucer. 
The awards are pseudo-random, allowing choices to be predicted if done in the correct order. Defeating the second saucer will light an extra ball in the scoop. As you progress through the game, saucers will take more hits to defeat. Therefore, using multi-balls is a great way to take safer shots. Martian attack can be lit by hitting all of the Martian targets or by stroke of luck. Once all aliens are secure, a two-ball multi-ball starts, with each Martian hit scoring points. Once started, if you have a Martian bomb, you can hit the launch button to award one of the Martians. The game records how many Martians you killed and even provides a high score for the person who killed the most. Keep in mind that shots to the flying saucer are worth more points than Martians and should be prioritized. The middle orbit is used to light lock and to lock balls for the regular multiball. If you complete a saucer and multiball, switch to completing loops and ramps to advance towards total annihilation. This multiball starts once three shots to each of the ramps and loops are complete for a total of 12 shots. Strobe multiball is only available as an award from the Stroke of Lup scoop. This is the only multiball you cannot collect saucer points during. An interesting note about this is that because of the strobe effect, this is the first pinball game to come with an epilepsy warning on it. Once you defend all five countries, the sixth wave is an attack on Mars called an attack Mars. First, the force field must be knocked down. Then the object has hit the ball into the hole. The drop target will not come back up. Every shot into the hole takes a chunk out of Mars. The 10th shot into the scoop destroys Mars and awards 2.5 billion points. Rule the Universe is the game's wizard mode. To qualify it, you must complete six objectives. Secure at least one super jackpot during the regular multiball. Super jets must have been started at one point during the game. Start Martian attack multiball and total annihilation. Mars has to have been conquered. And finally, a five-way combo must have been done. Rule the Universe is a four-ball multiball, where pretty much everything awards you points. Once five billion points have been collected, everything stops. The game awards you an extra five billion points, as well as putting your name in the high score list as the last person to rule. It is possible to have very big bonuses, like in the billions. The bonus multiplier maxes out at 250x. Attack from Mars also supports the buy-in feature at the end of the game, although it is off by default. Unlike many previous games, there is no separate buy-in button. The start button will buy an extra ball for one credit. So don't press start to abort the seven second buy-in counter. Use the flippers or launch button instead. Good luck and may you get your name on the board. AFM is a popular game in tournaments and amongst competitive players. The game supports a player-enabled tournament mode. Hold down a flipper for several seconds, wait for the message about tournament mode, and then start the game. In this mode, Stroke of Luck always awards 50 million and nothing else in order to de-randomize the games. Extra balls are also disabled. Fun fact, the original website for this game is still up and it is dripping with 90s HTML and CSS. The Martians attack five countries and more specifically important icons in each city the Statue of Liberty in the US, Germany's Brandenburg Gate, England's London Bridge, Italy's Tower of Pisa, and France's Eiffel Tower. In the video mode, pressing the launch button activates a smart bomb, which destroys every saucer in the visible display. Only one smart bomb can be used, and you can even use this smart bomb to kill the mothership as well. 30 saucers rewards the chance to shoot an extra ball. This same video mode is available in the game Junkyard, including the Smart Bomb and Mothership features. During multiball, you can get a ball to become trapped behind the targets. When another ball hits the front of the force field, the trapped ball will bounce straight up into the hole behind the drop target. This awards you the points for the next city and displays the words Dirty Pool on the DMD. Like many Williams games, ATM contains many cow references. Here are the ways to spot them. Sometimes when you shoot the big O beam, a cow is displayed and a female voice says, would you look at the size of that cow? And a moo is heard. Occasionally when you shoot the tractor beam, a cow is beamed up. Whenever you shoot one of these ramps, hit the launch button repeatedly for lots of mooing sounds. Do this for both ramps and then start the video mode in the usual way to play cow video mode, where the saucers have been replaced with mooing cows. Destroy all the cows and the giant mother cow will appear. Eat at Eddie's can be seen on the back glass, and you can even get a fan-made mod to put into the game. Williams released an official AFM jacket alongside the games, 
which included a certificate commemorating the game's launch. Attack from Mars was followed up with Revenge from Mars, released in 1999. Designed by George Gomez, it was the first game to run on the Williams Pinball 2000 platform. Attack from Mars is available as a licensed table of Pinball FX3 for several platforms and formerly available for the Pinball Arcade. You can also play on the go with the Williams Pinball app. Attack from Mars has also been featured in several virtual pins. Arcade 1UP also worked with Zen Studios to make a virtual cabinet that features the original art. I also found out there is a hilarious handheld version of the game. The ball physics for this alone just hurt my brain. WMS Industries introduced slot machines in 2011 for both Attack from Mars and Revenge from Mars. In 2017, the Chicago Gaming Company released three new editions of the Classic Williams title. Each edition has some cosmetic differences, including different options for cabinet trim, a large color display with HD graphics, and lighting effects on the speakers. Doug Watson was commissioned to design the new topper. Watson hand sculpted the Martian from which the molds were created to produce the new roto-molded animated Martian. Attack from Mars continues to abduct the minds of players around the world. It's easy to understand rules, exciting gameplay, and fun theme has allowed players the joy of smashing Martian heads with a silver ball. Now go out there and fight the good fight at an arcade or bar near you. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing and dropping a like. If you would like to support the channel and have access to exclusive live streams and events, please check out my Patreon. And make sure to comment on what video you would like to see next.